morning friends. In the previous lectures, we have seen the mouldings and, and its ingredients. We have learnt that mouldings sand contains the base sand and the second ingredient is the uh, binder or it is also known as the clay. The third ingredient is the additive, fourth ingredient is the moisture. And uh, once we mix these ingredients and as we keep pouring the molten metal, as we keep reusing the sand, what happens? Part of the clay becomes dead, dead clay because the pouring temperature is about to say uh, 700 to say if it is these are the aluminum alloys and it goes up to 1800 degree centigrade if it is the steel. Now, at such high temperature, right, the part of the clay near the mould cavity becomes dead clay means it loses all its properties and it becomes the dead clay. And as we keep reusing this moulding sand, the content of the dead clay increases. Not only that, we must remember that the moulding sand is subjected to most critical and tough situations. What is the pouring temperature? The pouring temperature of the aluminum is between about 750 degrees to 800 degrees centigrade. What about steel? The pouring temperature is between 1700 degrees to 1800 degrees centigrade. At such high temperatures, the moulding sand may collapse or it may not offer us the required properties. That is why it is very important for a foundry man to learn about the moulding sand properties. In this lecture, we will be learning about the moulding sand properties. The properties of the moulding sand are one is the refractoriness, second one permeability, third one cohesiveness, fourth one adhesiveness, fifth one flowability, sixth one plasticity, seventh one green strength, eighth one dry strength, ninth one hot strength, tenth one hardness, eleventh one collapsibility, twelfth one friability, thirteenth one durability and finally, the fourteenth one is the compactibility. So, these are the uh, most uh, what say required properties of an ideal moulding sand. Now, let us learn about all these properties one by one. First, let us learn about the refractoriness. What is the refractoriness? It is the ability of the moulding material to withstand the high temperature of the liquid metal to be poured. Just now, I have told you that the pouring temperature is a very high temperature. If it is aluminum, the melting point of aluminum is 660 degrees centigrade and the pouring temperature will be between 750 to 800 degrees centigrade. If it is steel, the pouring temperature is about 1750 degrees centigrade at such high temperature, a molten metal of such high pouring temperature, when it is poured into the mould cavity, what can happen? It is possible that the moulding sand may burn, but a good moulding sand should withstand this high temperature and it should not burn and it should not be damaged. It should withstand this high temperature till the entire solidification is over. This property of the moulding sand is known as the refractoriness. What is its significance? A moulding sand with poor refractoriness may burn during the pouring and the casting surface may be damaged. If the moulding sand does not possess this uh, refractoriness property, what happens? When we pour the molten metal at a high temperature, the part of the sand in the mould near the mould cavity surface will be burnt and it will be damaged. Finally, the surface of the casting will be damaged. The degree of the refractoriness depends on the quartz content that is the silicon dioxide shape and grain size of the particles. The next property is the permeability. What is this permeability? It is the ability of the moulding material to allow hot gases to pass through it. Once we pour the molten metal, remember 
that the molding sand contains the moisture. Once we pour the molten metal, immediately the moisture comes in contact with the molten metal and spontaneously it turns into vapor and this vapor has to escape to the atmosphere through the mold. How it can escape? Between the neighboring grains, there will be a small gap will be there clearance. So, it will be escaping through the neighboring what say sand grains. So, this is the permeability means it is the ability of the molding material to allow the hot gases to pass through that medium. It is possible that some sands may not possess this good property. Now, what happens if the hot gases do not escape through the molding medium to the atmosphere, they will be accommodated inside the molding cavity. Ultimately, the molding cavity will have the gas defects inside the what is the surface or on the surface. So, we have to ensure that the molding sand can possesses this good property called the permeability. Right? An increase in the permeability usually indicates a more open structure in the rammed sand. If the rammed sand is of more open structure, then naturally the permeability will be more. It allows more and more hot gases and steam because it is not rammed what say tightly. If the permeability is too high, then what will happen? It will lead to penetration defects and rough castings. Naturally, if when the permeability is too high means means what? The what say sand grains are not compacted very tightly, they are loosely compacted means between the neighboring sand grains there is large clearance is there. And now, the we pour the molten metal and the molten metal its viscosity is very less because of its high temperature, it can penetrate anywhere and it penetrates into the clearance between the two sand grains, neighboring sand grains and it goes inside and inside and it causes say makes a fin. This is the penetration defect. So, if the permeability is too high means the structure is more open means it will lead to the penetration defects. Not only that, what happens to the mould cavity surface? Because we have not rammed it properly tightly, it is loosely rammed, the mould what say cavity surface will have a rough structure, rough what say uh, texture because of that even the casting will develop a rough surface. That is why the permeability should not be too high. Next one, uh, yes a decrease in permeability. Now, let us see what happens if the permeability is too low indicates tighter packing of sand. Naturally, when we pack the sand very tightly, what happens? The clearance between the neighboring sand grains will be very minimum. In such a case, the hot gases may not be able to pass through the neighboring grains. In such a case, there is a decrease in the permeability. So, what? If the permeability is too low, it could lead to blow holes and pin hole defects. Yes, the steam cannot escape through the what say sand medium to the atmosphere. The hot gases cannot escape to the atmosphere through the sand medium. Finally, they will be accommodated inside the mould cavity. And finally, on the casting surface, there will be blow holes, large, large what say air bubbles will be there or pin holes will be there, small, small uh, what say uh, sized uh, what say holes will be there on the casting surface. So, that is what can happen if the permeability is too low. So, one has to maintain the permeability such that it is moderate, neither it should be too high nor it should be too low. These are the factors influencing permeability. One is the grain shape, next one grain fineness number, GFN, next one grain distribution, next one moisture content, next one active clay and finally, the additives. Now, let us see how these factors influence the permeability. Let us see the grain shape. First of all, uh, you must remember that the sand grains are broadly they can be classified into three types. One is the round grains, second one angular grains, third one subangular grains. Here you can see these are the sand grains, these are the round grains and here you can see these are the angular grains and these are the subangular grains. 
In the case of the round grains, we get lower permeability, whereas with the angular grains, we get the higher permeability. Whereas with the subangular grains, in intermediate permeability and strength we get. Now, let us see this graph influence of the grain shape on the permeability. Now, this is the, this curve indicates the round sand grains, whereas this curve indicates the angular sand grains. Now, this x axis indicates the moisture content and the y axis indicates the permeability. Now, let us consider the round grains. As we increase the moisture, it generally yesterday we have seen that the moisture content varies from 2 percent to 5 percent. Yes, when it starts from 2 percent, as we keep increasing with up to 3 percent, it is increasing. But once it is 3 percent, as we keep increasing the moisture content, permeability is coming down. Means, uh, the permeability will be maximum at about 3 percent of the moisture. Similarly, let us consider this one angular grains, right? The moisture content starts from the 2 percent. When it is about 2.5, the permeability is maximum. Once the moisture content is more than 2.5 percent, the permeability is slowly coming down. So, this is the what is a influence of the grain shape on the permeability. So, if from this graph, we can know that angular grains offer the a uh, higher permeability. Next one, uh, let us see the grain fineness number. Grain fineness number indicates the finer grains, right? Uh, right. So it means if the grain fineness number is high, it means the sand grains are finer grains. If the grain fineness number is low, means the sand grains are larger grains or coarser grains. Such grains, these fine grains decrease the permeability, but improve the surface finish naturally. When there are fine grains, right? so uh, what say hot gases uh, cannot escape very easily, but surface finish will be very good. Lower grain fineness number indicates coarser grains. Such grains increase permeability, yes, because they are coarser, there is more clearance between the neighboring sand grains. So, more gases will be escaping through the medium, but it reduces the surface finish. What happens to the surface finish? Yes, because these are the larger grains, they create a rough surface or rough texture near the mould cavity. Accordingly, even the casting will have a rough surface. Now, let us see this graph, influence of grain fineness number on the permeability. Now, you can see this side is the coarser grains and this side is the finer grains, right. So, yes, say the uh, size of the uh, what say uh, sands are becoming finer and finer, what is happening? The permeability is coming down. So, this graph tells that the finer sand grains offer lower permeability, whereas the coarser sand grains offer higher permeability. Next one, let us see the uh, under this factor influencing the permeability grain distribution. What is this grain distribution? In a what say sand, there will be different sizes of the sand grains will be there, right. Maybe larger sand grains will be there, medium sand grains will be there, smaller sand grains will be there and very fine sand grains will be there. Now, he, in the first case, you can see uh, the distribution is only what say once what say size is there. Sand grains of nearer size improve the permeability. You, here you can see only similar sizes are present in this uh, what say sand. Let us come to the second case. Second, in the second case, two types of sizes are there. You can see uh, the, this, these are the bigger grains and in between the clearance, there are small grains. Now, what is happening? If that be the case, means here the sand distribution is little wide. Now, what is happening? Previously, there is more clearance here. So, the hot gases can easily escape, but in those clearances, now the smaller grains are occupying. Now, what happens? These, block, these small grains block the passage of the hot gases. That is how the permeability comes down. Now, let us see the third case. Here you can see uh, three types of the what say sand sizes. 
one is the bigger size and this is the medium size and this is very fine size. At least in the second case, little clearance is there. Through that clearance, hot gases were passing. Now, even in this little clearance, the second what say very fine sand grains are occupying. Then what happens? The clearance will be minimum and the ability of the hot gases to pass through this sand grains will be extremely minimum. Means in the third case, the sand distribution is very larger. Very uh, large grains are there, medium sand grains are there very fine grains are there means distribution is very wider distribution. So, sand grains of variable sizes reduce the permeability. Next one, what about the moisture content, influence of the moisture on the permeability. So, here we can see in this graph, this is the moisture content and this is the permeability. right? So, this these numbers indicate the grain finest number. Remember, if the grain fineness number is very high, that indicates the there are very fine sand grains are there. On the other hand, if the grain fineness number is very low, it indicates that the sand grains are very larger or very coarser. Now, we can say he, this is the grain fineness number 108 means this is a fine sand. So, the permeability is very low. And again, it, it varies with the moisture content. When the moisture content is 1 percent, it is like this. But as we keep increasing at about 2.5 percent, it reaches the maximum permeability and slowly it again it comes down. And as we the what say grain finest number is decreasing, the permeability is increasing. In each case, the here the per, what say grain finest number is a 78. Even in this 78, say you can see the moisture content is 1 percent and it slowly it is increasing, but once it reaches about 2.5 percent and again it is decreasing. And same is the case with the other grain finest numbers also. So, from this graph we can know that as we increase the moisture content from the minimum amount, the permeability will be increasing to certain level. Once it crosses about 2 percent or 2 and half percent, again as we keep increasing the moisture reduction, the permeability will be coming down. Now, let us see the influence of the clay on the uh, permeability. Here we are telling, means because we are uh, uh, ignoring the dead clay, so we are talking about the active clay. right? So, among the, in the previous lectures, we have seen that among the clays, right? so bentonite is the most popular clay. So, here, so here we can see this x axis indicates the bentonite percent and the y axis indicates the permeability. Now, we can see this is the 2 percent moisture and say when the moisture content is 2 percent, the permeability is this much at about 115 like that. But as we increase the bentonite content, what is happening to the permeability? It is gradually decreasing. Means, what we can conclude? With the what say increase in the bentonite or with the increase in the clay content, permeability gradually comes down because these bentonite what say is a fine particles. So, they occupy between the clearance of the sand grains that is how they block the hot gases or the uh, what say steam. Next one same is the case with the this is the what say 4 percent moisture. We can see here, here also with the increase in the bentonite or the clay content, the permeability is coming down. Next one, let us see the influence of additives on the permeability. right? So, here this is the moisture content and this is the permeability. right? Of course, this is the bentonite and this is the, the fire clay which is a, an additive. right? So, what is its influence on the permeability? When the moisture content is 2 percent, right? So, the permeability is this much as we what say increase the moisture content and right with the per, what say uh, the permeability is coming down. So, this is the effect of the additives on the permeability. Next one, let us see the cohesiveness. What is this cohesiveness? It is the ability of the sand particles to stick to each other. Right? Here, even if it is what say held like this, so once we press it, it should take the same shape. After we press, it should not go back to its original shape. 
that is the cohesiveness, the ability of the sand particles to stick to each other. What is its significance? A sand with good cohesiveness does not break after the moulding and during pouring, that is the significance of the cohesiveness. Next one, let us see the adhesiveness. It is the ability of the moulding sand to stick with the inner walls of the moulding box, that is the adhesiveness. Means cohesiveness means it is what is a binding between the sand, what is a sand particles, whereas uh, adhesiveness means binding between the sand particles and the walls of the mould box. And what is its significance? If the adhesiveness of the sand is good, the sand does not drop down from the moulding boxes during the mould handling. Yes, if there is no adhesiveness, right, what happens? We compact the sand in the moulding sand and yes, we hold the moulding box with the handles as we are carrying, suddenly the mould may drop down because there is no binding between the moulding sand and the walls of the moulding box, means there is no adhesiveness. So, a good moulding sand should possess this important property, good property that is known as the adhesiveness. Next one, let us see the flowability. It is the ability of the moulding sand to flow and get compacted all around the pattern and take up the required shape. Sometimes the pattern may have a what is a very fine features and it may have a very complex features. If it is not a good moulding sand, it just uh, what say takes a rough what say compaction around the pattern what about the fine details, it may not to occupy strictly around the fine details. There may be complex details may be there, just it occupies around the complex details, but it may not strictly occupy around the complex details. Then what will happens with uh, such a what say moulding sand, we withdraw the pattern and we pour the molten metal, we finally in the casting, we cannot see the required features. But a good moulding sand should possess this property, the flowability. Means, as we keep ramming the what is sand, it should strictly occupy around the fine details, around the complex details, and it should reproduce the what is a patterns details on the casting. That is known as the flowability. Now, what are the factors influencing the flowability? Round grains increase the flowability. Excessive binder or the clay decreases the flowability. Excessive additive like cereal reduces the flowability. Next one, let us see the plasticity. What is plasticity? It is the ability of the moulding sand to retain the shape given to it after the process of compaction around the pattern. Yes, we take a pattern. And around that pattern, we what say place the moulding sand and we compact it and we compact tightly, then we withdraw the pattern. Now, if it is not a good moulding sand, after we withdraw the pattern, the shape may change. That be the case, we may not get the required geometry for the casting. But a good moulding sand should strictly retain the shape given to it and the shape should not alter after the pattern is withdrawn. The shape should not alter during pouring, the shape should not alter during solidification. That ability, that property is known as the plasticity, right. So, this is the significance. When the moulding sand has good plasticity, the shape of the cavity does not change after the compaction, not only after the compaction during pouring it should not change, during solidification it should not change. Next one, let us see the grain strength. First of all, uh, in the previous class we have seen that green sand, what is the meaning the green sand? Green sand means the moulding sand in which the moisture is present, right. The moulding sand that contains moisture is termed as the green sand. Right? Now, what is this green strength? Green strength is the ability of the moulding sand to retain the shape of the constructed mould 
in its green state. Means when the moisture is present, it should what say retain the shape given to it. Next one, the green strength of fine sand is higher than the coarse sand. And if we use two as what say two sands, one is the fine sand and the other one is the coarse sand, naturally the core fine sand will have a better green strength for the same ingredients added to them. So, this is the influence of what say green shape on the green strength. Here we can see this is the moisture x axis and the y axis shows the green strength. right? So, for the round grains as the moisture is increasing, right? you see it is gradually decreasing with the increase in the moisture and this line indicates the angular grains. For the angular grains also with increase in the moisture, the green strength is gradually decreasing. But when we see these two graphs, what we can conclude? The round grains offer better green strength compared to the angular grains. Now, this is the influence of grain size on the uh, green strength. Previously, we have seen the influence of the grain shape. Now, this is the grain size. Now, you can see here this side, the left side indicates the coarser grains the right side indicates the fine grains. Now, of course, uh, yes we are starting the here what is happening from the coarse grains as the sand becomes finer and finer what is happening? The green strength is gradually increasing. So, what does this graph tell us? As the what is the sand becomes finer and finer or as we use finer and finer sand the green strength will become more and more. That is the information we can obtain from this graph. Next one, influence of grain size on the green strengths. Now, in this graph we can see what say the green strengths of different sands of different what say grain fineness. Now, you, you can see here four graphs are there. This graph's grain fineness number is 53. This for this graph for this sand the grain fineness number is 63, for this sand the grain fineness number is about 78, 78 and this is 108. What is this grain fineness number? I have already told grain fineness number if then that number is high it indicates a finer sand. Now, you can see here this is the sand whose grain fineness number is 53 means this is the coarser sand this is 63 somewhat what is a finer sand and here we can see the grain fineness number is 78, this is still finer and 108 and it is more finer. But of course, as the moisture content is increasing at one stage the permeability green strength will be maximum and it is gradually coming down. But when we look at these four graphs, what we can understand? A sand of higher grain fineness number offers better or higher green strength or a sand of what is a very fine sand, a finer sand offers a better or a green uh, higher green strength. Next one, influence of the mulling time on the green strength. What is this mulling? Mulling means we there will be a sand muller will be there. right? So, we place the all the ingredients, the base sand, the what is a clay, or the binder, the additives, the moisture, all the in the required proportion, we put them inside the what is a muller and we rotate it. The muller has two blades and two rollers. As the rollers are rotating, as the blades are sweeping the sand, they are what is a uh, well nourished all these ingredients. This is known as the mulling. So, this mulling has an effect on the green strength. Let us see this x axis indicates the mulling time the y axis indicates the green strength as the what say mulling time is increasing right so this is the time in minutes it starts say about say half minute say when it reaches about 2 minutes we get the maximum green strength beyond 2 minutes even if we further mull it there may not be considerable hike in the green strength that is what we can learn from this graph 
And again the green strength there are what say we can measure it in two ways. One is the green compression strength and the second one is the green shear strength. Now, you we can see here this is a graph right the influence of the southern bentonite on the green compression strength. In the previous class we have seen that bentonite is the most popular clay or it is the most popular binder. Again this bentonite is divided in uh, uh, is two types right uh, among the two types one is the uh, southern bentonite and the other one is the western bentonite right. So, influence of the southern bentonite on the green compression strength and here we can see the x axis is the tempering water and the y axis is the green compression strength. Now, what is happening is, so as we increase the what say moisture content gradually it is increasing and it is coming down right. So, that is say the all these all indicate the clay percentages, here we, they have added 2 percent clay, here this is 4 percent clay, 5 percent clay and 12 percent clay, 15 percent clay and so on. In each case what is happening is the moisture with the increase in the moisture content the green compression strength is increasing and then it is coming down. But when we consider all these curves what we can learn, what we can learn right. So, a what say a higher bentonate content gives the higher green compression strength that is what we can learn from this graph. Now, this is the influence of the western bentonate on the green compression strength and here we can see the x axis is the uh, what is a tempering water and the y axis is the green compression strength and here we can see uh, what is a different uh, graphs representing uh, different clay additions. Uh, clay here the clay is the western bentonite and uh, in the same thing is happening here as we keep increasing the moisture content it raises and it comes down, it raises and it comes down. But why when we consider all these uh, what say curves together what we can know with increase in the western bentonite the green compression strength increases that is the what say inference from this graph. Next one influence of kaolinite on the green compression strength. So, right. So, this is another binder. Now, let us see uh, yes uh, this is the x axis is the tempering water and y axis is the green compression strength and we can see different curves are there and each curve represents the uh, a particular clay content. Now, as we increase the what say moisture content it is the it is increasing and it is coming down, it is increasing and it is coming down. But when we compare, when we consider all these graphs together what we can know with increase in the addition of the kaolinite the green compression strength will be increasing. Next one influence of green shape on green compression strength. Now, here we can see these are the uh, what say this curve indicates the angular grains, this curve indicates the rounded grains and uh, this is the x axis is the tempering water and y axis is the green compression strength. Now, as we increase the water, water content for the angular grains the green compression strength is gradually coming down and same thing is happening with the rounded grains also. As we increase the water content the green compression strength is gradually coming down. But when we uh, consider both these graphs what we can know the rounded grains offer higher green compression strength right. So, this is the influence of the grain shape on the green compression strength. So, so far we have learned uh, say uh, all these properties we have seen among the properties of the molding sands. Next one let us see the dry strength. What is the dry strength? Just now we have seen that green sand means the molding sand in which the moisture is present and into that mold we pour the molten metal and within few minutes the moisture will be evaporated, the mold becomes dry. Maybe in the presence of the moisture the molding sand may possess the strength which we call it as the green strength, but in the absence of the moisture the sand may not possess the required strength to hold the molten metal or to hold the shape of the cavity, but a good molding sand should possess the strength even in the 
absence of the moisture. This is known as the dry strength. So, it is the ability of the molding sand or the molding material to retain the exact shape of the mold cavity in the dry condition when the molten metal is poured into the mold and to withstand the withstand the metallostatic pressure of the liquid metal. Not only that, it in the absence of the moisture, it should contain it should what say uh, what say it should contain the same shape and also it should withstand the metallostatic pressure of the liquid metal. Now, dry strength is increasing increased by the mixing of additive like dextrin. In the previous class, we have seen that we mix the additives along with the clay. Why? These additives offer us the some special properties and they minimize the defects. So, when we add the dextrin, the dry strength will be increasing. Again, this dry strength can be measured in two ways. One is the dry shear strength and the other one is the dry compression strength. So far, uh, we have seen up to dry strength. Next one, let us see the hot strength. What is the hot strength? We have seen the green strength. Green strength means strength of the mould in the presence of the moisture or the ability of the mould to what say retain the shape in the presence of the moisture. Next to that, we have seen dry strength. What is that? The ability of the mould to retain the shape and to accommodate the uh, what say molten metal in the absence of the moisture. Immediately after pouring of the molten metal, within a few minutes, the moisture will be dried out. But this molten metal will be in the cavity for about 1 hour, for about say at least about 20 minutes to half an hour, it will be in the liquid state. Now, not only that, differently there is no moisture, there is, there is what say, uh, we cannot say it is the green strength. Not only it is dry, it becomes very hot. The temperature of the mould becomes very high. In such a state, maybe just immediately after pouring, in the absence of the moisture, it may have the ability to hold the shape and to accommodate the molten metal and to withstand the, uh, what say, uh, this uh, pressure from the molten metal. But when the temperature raises up, it may not have the strength. But a good molding sand should possess the strength even when its temperature is very high. That is known as the hot strength. It is the ability of the molding material to retain the exact shape of the molding cavity at an elevated temperature. Hot strength is increased by mixing of additive like pitch and pitch is one of the additive. So, when we mix the pitch along with the what say molding sand ingredients, so this hot strength will be increasing. Next one, let us see this hardness. It is the ability of the molding sand to resist any inadvertent and unwanted deformations after the process of compaction around the pattern. Yes, uh, we uh, what say put the pattern inside the molding box and we place the molding sand and we compact it and we ram it and after that we take the or we withdraw the pattern from the mould. Now, the mould should have the ability to resist any unwanted deformations. Maybe uh, unwantedly if, so someone may try to what say push it or uh, what say hit it. In such a case, if these are the uh, what say uh, what say uh, these are done at a moderate pressure the mould what say shape should not change, right. So, there should not be any deformation to the shape of the mould cavity. This property is known as the hardness. Hardness depends upon the degree of ramming, clay content and moisture. Next one, let us see the collapsibility. What is this collapsibility? It is the ability of the molding sand to get collapsed after the casting solidifies. Now, what we do during after the solidification is over, we make the mold, then we pour the molten metal into the mold. After some time, the molten metal solidifies and after solidification, what we do? We break the sand to take the casting outside. Sometimes the casting, what say 
the, the modding sand will be so hard that we have to put extra or extreme labor to what say break the mold and to take the casting outside. In such a case, the molding sand has poor collapsibility, whereas a good molding sand should have a good collapsibility means it should be easily breakable after the casting has solidified. Now, this is very important the molding sand should possess the green strength, it should possess the dry strength, it should possess the hot strength at the same time it should possess the collapsibility otherwise uh, what say breaking the uh, mold or this is known as the shake out, it is also known as knock out this pro process becomes extremely tough. Now, we a good molding sand should possess good collapsibility means it should be easily breakable. Presence of additives like wood floor will improve the collapsibility of a molding sand. In the previous lecture, we have seen the abo about the wood floor. What is this wood floor? This is the pulverized wood, it is a wood powder and uh, what about its shape? Its shape will be a fine powder and sometimes it uh, sometimes and few particles will be as big as a rice grain. Now, these uh, what say uh, particles of the wood floor will be occupying between the neighboring sand grains and because of the presence of the wood floor, the collapsibility will be improved. We can easily break the molding sand after the solidification of the casting. Next property is the friability. What is this friability? It is the ability of the molding sand to crumble after solidification of the casting is over. What is this? Just now we have seen the collapsibility. It, the collapsibility is looking similar to the friability. Collapsibility generally it refers to the mould. If we are able to break the mould into two pieces, then it has the good collapsibility. Once uh, uh, we make it into two pieces or two or three pieces, yes we can take the casting outside. Whereas, friability is different, friability means generally it refers to the cores. Suppose we place a core inside the molding sand, these cores are kept to get the hollow cavities inside the casting. These cores are also made up of some special core sands. This core sand we will be studying in the next lectures. Now, the, unless it is not enough for us to break the what say core sand into two pieces. If we can make the core sand into two pieces, it is not enough. We should be in a position to make it into small, small pieces, then only the entire core will come out. That is the friability, right. So, that is the ability of the molding sand to crumble after the solidification of the casting is over. Now, how to improve this property? Excessive of use, use of additives like dextrin could reduce the friability. We have seen dextrin is one of the important additives of the sand ingredients, right, molding sand ingredients. So, one should not use excessive dextrin. If once this dextrin is what say excessively used, the property of the friability will come down. Next one, the durability. What is this durability? It is the ability of the molding sand to withstand repeated cycles of heating and cooling during the casting operations. Now, what we are doing in the metal casting? We mix the ingredients of the molding sand, we make the mold, we pour the molten metal, the molten metal solidifies. After solidification is over, we break that sand. The sand is totally dry in such a state. Now, we take the casting outside, we clean the casting the, right, then what we do? Again, this sand will be reused, it will be mixed with the water, a little more what is a clay or the binder will be added, again it will the whole all this what is a sand will be uh, what is a uh, placed inside the sand muller and it will be tempered, again a mould will be created, again we pour the molten metal and after solidification we break it and we take the sand again, again we temper it and this process keeps on going on and it goes on like this. But if the sand does not have a good durability 
property what happens may be after we use it for two after two or three times the sand may not offer the required properties. But a good molding sand should possess this uh, durability property means even when we are using it repeatedly using it means what what is happening we are molding it then it is subjected to high temperature then it cools down then we break it again it will be we mix the water means it is subjected to cooler conditions we temper it and this cycle goes on with all this what is a complicated cycle the sand should not lose its properties this is known as the durability it is the ability of the molding stand sand to withstand the repeated cycles of heating and cooling during the casting operations finally let us learn about the compactibility what is this compactibility compactibility indicates the water tempering degree of the green sand molding right compactibility is the percentage decrease in height of a loose mass of sand under the influence of a controlled compaction. Maybe we take the loose sand and put it inside a, com, what say, a container and try to what say give some what say jerks to what extent it will be compacting that is the compactibility. So, high compactibility could result in improved dimensions, right? A better casting finish and less mold penetration. So, these are the benefits I can say if the molding sand has got the higher compactibility. Now, these are the drawbacks gas or blow or the pinhole defects may arise or brittle mold surface may be there or expansion problems will be there and finally, difficult shake out or the knockout problem will be there if the sand possess the high compactibility. Low compactibility could result in friable edges. Next one, crushes or the inclusions. Next one, mechanical penetration, cuts and washes, cope drops, oversize castings and rough castings. Factors affecting the compactibility. Water content. The second factor is the mixing time or the mulling time. The third factor is the active clay and the LOI levels means loss on ignition. Next one, the quality of bentonite, right. Next one, the type of additives like sea coal, starch and the cereals. So, these factors influence the compactibility. And here we can see, uh, we can better understand this compactibility, right. So, the dry sand is uh, what is a placed inside a container and loosely inside like this. So, this is a what is a specimen, specimen tube. Now, say it is given some kind of what say a jerks or the or say it is ramped, right. So, the sand is compacted up to this level and with further ramming, right, it, is, it has come to this level. Now, we can say in the second case, the compactibility is what say average in this, what say, right, in this case, the what is a compactibility is average and in this case the compactibility is very high means it is able to get compacted very high that is why the third case the compactibility is very high. And here we can see yes this is the compactibility this y axis and this x axis indicates the water content and these three curves indicate the different clay additions. Now, what is happening is now as we, uh, as we increase this uh, what say clay content, right. So, even this uh, compactibility will be increasing. Friends, uh, in this class or in this lecture, we have seen that the a good molding sand should possess certain important properties and we have seen that. So, these properties are refractoriness, permeability, cohesiveness, adhesiveness, flowability, plasticity, green strength, dry strength, hot strength, hardness, collapsibility, friability, durability and compactibility. And we have learnt what these properties are and what happens if the molding sand does not possess these good properties.
and we have seen what are the factors influencing these pro what say properties and how to improve them. And in the next lecture, let us see how to measure these properties. So, our next lecture will be what say moulding sand testing. Thank you.